So yeah, these foxes don't have a name. Because they were just random hero characters. And basically, all the weird animals with sword character designs that I come up with was literally just me doodling because I personally didn't want to make fan art all the time. Because I do want to, with these foxes, I want to kind of like demonstrate their contrastiness. Like, obviously, they're both sexy characters, but. I guess I want like two different flavors of sexy because <laughs> I kind of want to indicate that they might be alternate players in an MMO or something like that where, okay, they probably pick the same class, but they pick different accessories and stuff like that. Where it's like, okay, they probably put in some more build into probably like shamanism or stuff like that with the skulls. Like, this probably would tilt more barbarian in a way, and this would tilt more, probably more like knighty and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting. I've never drawn these fox characters separately. Like, I've never, like, made a standalone drawing of them. So, I don't know. I'm really just improvising. I'm not even using... how I make them. Like, I am going without construction lines here. I am just going nuts. So, obviously, I'm just going without perfection stuff here. And I am pretty much just figuring out what the heck their shape is. So here I am kind of just drawing Like how they would look here. And that she just has weird thick pauldrons because she's supposed to look like this MMO character. And, well, specifically Warcraft MMO characters have ridiculously huge pauldrons. She has larger, f yeah, she has larger feet. So what I've been doing is I've been moving around the character torso. And then selecting then selecting the legs here and then stretching them up so they're a lot taller looking so they match the proportion of the illustration a little more so back to two boom, boom. and the bottom of the shoulder is usually at the bottom of the hip here let's see I think this was more of a bikini type of look, see. Because the scene, I think this was supposed to be like a weird battle corset or maybe it was more of a uh, unitard and things like that. I think that's how it was roughly. I gotta put the random instances of knives because she is always prepared. She's a freaking well-prepared warrior. <laughs> and nothing's going to stop her from, you know, getting dungeon loot. And that's kind of that's the reason why she has knives. And also, she has knives because Cole has knives. One thing that I do, do want to incorporate with uh, my character designs is anything that my main character would have... I want to at least have an instance where there's another character who would also have that sort of thing. Because I like the idea of, uh, like, big, notable, I guess, powers or unique weapons not being as unique as people think. Where it's like, okay, what if there were two, uh, what if there were two, uh, master swords out there, but you had two different users who used their stuff completely differently? Like, how would a person, how would a person, or at least how would Link deal with that? Like, if there was another person who had a master sword. That's kind of like a premise that I've been interested in trying out with Black Mask. I mean, obviously, there will be unique weapons. Like, I'm not a complete idiot. Like, I understand why there are unique weapons, but... I wanted to like try out things where it's like, okay, how would these two guys with similar superpowers work? 
I hear One Piece does that a lot, but I've never read One Piece. I've only read, like, JoJo. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is the only other, I guess, mug and kind of that does stuff like that. I'm just interested in, like, how that would work and how it could just incorporate it in something. This is pretty decent for basically me not using construction lines. Let's see. Oh, she actually has two knives. Yeah, that's kind of like one of those things where... We're gonna have like some little bits of fluff. It's kind of interesting because in another comic, like this would probably simply be cross hatching, but because it's good enough to look like fluff, it's a nice way to indicate that a character has fur. Because it's really tough to do hair design for furry characters. So, you kind of have to do things in clumps like this, where you pretty much just make the big clumps and you may add a few lines inside to suggest the idea of a character being really, really furry. Put toes here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I usually just add five toes because most animals have five toes. And it's better to be in the habit of just drawing all five of the fingers and toes than just working in four toes like a typical cartoon. Because it also helps you vary your art style much easier because since you're able to work in those alternate shapes you never have to worry about you know being stuck drawing realistically though to be fair my uh, realistic art still takes a little longer with uh, like the furs of fury stuff but overall I'd say or at least from what people tell me my art looks realistic enough so that's really nice for me I do like that like, nice and fluffy. She has really fluffy shins. Or, calves. 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 C-A-L-V-E-S. Calves. I think, uh, the reason why I put all these fluffs here is because I've seen, uh, the black cat have fluffs like these. Like, the black cat from Spider-Man. Like, Felicia Hardy. That black cat. And the nature of a lot of her iterations of her costume, she has these little fluffs where, you know, they fluff out. And it looks really cool. So I was like, you know what, that looks pretty dope. I'll do something similar to that. Perfection mode where I'm just doing this. Will they be characters? Not sure. <laughs> they probably sh they probably could be. I could stand to actually put some names and backstories to half these motherfuckers, because I'll just belt out character designs mostly out of drawing habit, because I'm kind of just like, okay, I need something to draw, and so my brain's just going to be like, okay, just start drawing, and that's how it's going to be. You know, I'm just going to be drawing and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I forgot to add in the strap katanas and things like that. I also need to add in like another strap here. And I realize this could probably work. See, this is a good character design opportunity because now I could set up so she has side straps and that's how she holds her weapons is she has like little side straps. Probably like weird side overalls, like uh, uh, some uh, like uh, hip holsters will have that. So maybe it would work like that. Or maybe it would work more like uh, it worked more like a harness. It's kind of weird because she actually also has fluff there too. Hmm. Yeah, now I'm constantly, like, thinking, how can I just incorporate the swords on her back? 
because I'm like, okay, I drew this, but I wasn't thinking about how on earth her sword's actually stuck to her back, which is a bad artist thing, I'll admit. <laughs> it's dumb when it comes to putting katanas in a thing because I think when I initially draw this, drew this, I was like, okay, we just need a warrior that's equipped with blades and so I was just improvising okay what kind of weapons is this character gonna have okay katanas because it's different from the great swords that uh this other fox has that's literally just a mindset that I had when it came when it came to just deciding okay should I make katanas that's literally it there's no other thought set behind why I gave her katanas and she looks nothing like a samurai. Because I think uh, Gru the Wanderer also uses katanas. Like, I don't know if you've read uh, the comic Gru the Wanderer, but that's kind of, that's kind of like how he, how he does his sword stuff is he wields katanas as a barbarian hero. Yeah, Gru the Wanderer is a funny comic, I recommend it. All. <laughs> this character looks like Rob Liefeldy, and I want to kind of just, yeah, I want her to just look like more of an MMO style character, so, you know, she she would look like what if a 12-year-old designed a, no, what if a 12-year-old was, you know, dungeon crawling for their stuff, and this is the equipment loadout that they were rocking. Just add a little bit of shiny stuff because I'm a sucker for inking. I just like doing little moments of just cool ink stuff. Okay. All right. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna just go too much into it. Except the fine too. A little bit more because. Okay. It just suggests the fluff that's on here. And that's that's good. I'm I'm letting go of this character. Let's see, can I I think I could. I think I might be able to. If I can just flat this character, I won't have to do shit. Okay. Now we're fine this a little bit. Yeah, here I am just going back into the perfection mode where it's like, ooh, make make this look really, really good. And I don't have to do that. And here I am kind of just saying, oh, I can draw my more unique foxes. They're completely different from all the other foxes in the world. And then I don't realize that, oh, hey, I'm just adding more bullshit to my problems. <laughs> ah, boy. But I do what I can. There's a lot of stuff I need to figure out. Invert you, add a new layer. Yeah, that'll be good. But anyway, let's uh, draw the other fox to kind of just get that there. And I think the main thing that I did with this fox is she has like little pigtails and stuff like that. I think uh, they're, I think they're probably like more miniature skulls. I think the reason I gave her skulls is because Dawson has skulls, and I think that was the big end of it, really. At the beginning, and that was the end of it. Just get like a little thick improvisation to kind of just say, hey, here it is. And she actually has technically smaller, she has a smaller chest than this character. Because I think I just drew them. That's another thing that kind of just makes them different enough is, you know, alternate chest sizes for the different characters. Because obviously, if you just make them all big, big tit ladies, it wouldn't really be as special, you know? But yeah, she she has a one piece from what I'm seeing from this too. Yeah, she has a one piece. I 
think she's more like cami style, where it's more of a high top piece. And then she has really big thigh high boots. Oh, shoot. Yep, she has boots. And she has really big thigh high boots. I forget what the boot style is, but I just do something more realistic there. She just has absurdly large boots because they're thigh highs combined with boots, so that's pretty much the logic that I was going under. I think they're more like a odd rim, or not rim, but a tread type of thing. You can probably like barely see it on drawing half the time, as my freaking big head's in the way. You now the freaking webcam screen. Whatever, that works. Anywho. Yeah, so we have these big freaking thigh highs here. And this could probably be like a belt. Put that there. And this could probably like stick out like this. And that'd be like. Our hips look. Our hips could be wider here. Belts here, so hips could just taper out this way, and that's how it goes. Hmm. Now that's out of taste. Yep. Yeah, let's uh, add in the little boot knee spots here. It actually doesn't look as shapely as the other box lady, but I think that's kind of the point. I think she's more of the, uh, I guess the Veronica to her Betty, but then again, this would be a black-haired fuck, so I feel like she would be the Veronica. Wait, no. Betty's the black-haired one, right? No, Veronica's the black-haired one. Alright, gotta get in the arms there. Alright. A little nice curve at the, uh, at the arms here to kind of just incorporate how her thighs look, or not her thighs, but the forearms. The arm thighs. <laughs> you gotta do the arm thighs. And a lot of, I think a lot of my drawing style also derives from my sketching style, where I keep a lot of my construction lines overall, and I incorporate the construction lines in my drawing. Kind of just, one, reduce the amount of erasing that I do, and two, to, I guess, just make things a little more pleasing looking. <laughs> that's how she, that's how she rolls. She's just a freaking powerful shaman with a giant freaking barbarian sword. So she's a barbarian. Like, I don't know where the shaman stuff is. She is from freaking the Hyborian age fox here. Like, she she is totally cool with making skulls because, you know, she wears the skulls for, you know, as a trophy. She understands that equipment will have good stats. <laughs> you know, like, she's a barbarian, but she ain't stupid. Like, hey, if this will give me, like, plus, plus, uh, plus five to, like, equipment, or not equipment load, 
like a plus uh, two to agility or something like that. I'm gonna freaking take that because I want I want more hits for my cleaving. I want to cleave a motherfucker a few more times. But then again, she would probably invest more in power if she's a barbarian. I don't know. I've never played D and D. I play JRPGs more often than like normal RPGs. So, in terms of builds, I'm not exactly well versed in, I guess, RPG mechanics. I'd like to be. All right. Then we'll just get back to coloring. And this is how they'll look overall. I'll at least add the muzzle stuff here. I'll at least add some muzzle stuff right here just so things are. Uh oh. Okay, good. At least add some mother s muzzle stuff there just so people can understand and see the coloring here. Let's do some really fast. Really, really absurdly fast coloring. I think I'll probably just keep this as like a reference. I like sticking to my improv thing. Or not my improv thing, but my reference pile here. The fluff's actually like up to her elbows. So yeah, they pretty much just have really similar palettes to kind of just have like a nice moment of unification. I don't even know what the hell to name these two, but that's kind of how that goes. I draw characters and I never think of anything about them because they're just goofy ideas for character designs that I don't think too hard about till like maybe well later when I see this character design I'm like huh I should draw that again just because I'm out of ideas currently <laughs> yeah that kind of thing that's an, also another reason why you know you can why, like, being able to do original stuff is a great idea more than fan art because, you know, you can go back to old OCs that you made up and you can repurpose them or reuse them and things like that. Like, they can get into, they can get into, like, a comic, a, they can get into a storyline that you've been writing and if they don't work and you drop them, you can always just reuse them for something else. And, you know, that's an easy thing you just jump back into because you know since they're completely yours you don't have to ask anyone to use it you can just use it whenever and not really think about it I think her legs also have that too actually her legs stretch all the way here that's interesting well you know what? I'll just leave it at that and kind of do this here where she has black hair but who knows may I like have them as like some side characters or even enemies they could another thing that's good for uh another thing that having a lot of these original characters already is that you could just pick you could just pick whatever things you need and just realign them like, obviously, you probably would need to redesign them so they're a little more sinister looking. 